Hey everybody, welcome back to Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. Uh, last episode, we got beaten up pretty badly by uh, a Brimarak and a bunch of other demon hordes that we've sliced through in this uh, market square. So now we're going to finally take a rest here and uh, hopefully gain back some of our strength and then push through. So yeah, there we go. Camp. Just rest one cycle, see what happens. How'd you know you don't got long to live? You look oh. healthy enough to me. They're talking, how nice. Ah, but that's because I am secretly coughing into a lace handkerchief that's becoming stained with blood as my condition progresses. That sounds not good. A strange cancer. Alright. Sometimes a long-awaited rest does not bring the desired relief. What comes is a heavy, clinging sleep on the edge of wakefulness, where consciousness seems poised between reality and oblivion. The possible reasons for such disturbed slumber are myriad, strained nerves perhaps, or a lingering reaction to trauma. Mickey Mouse emerges from the oblivion of his leaden sleep like a drowned man dragged up from the depths of a swamp. The wound in his chest is burning like someone pressed an invisible brand to it. The wound has closed again, but the blood stain on his shirt betrays its presence beneath. There is no time to investigate the cause behind his malaise. A trying day lies ahead. How will Mickey Mouse be up to the challenge if his thoughts are so muddled and his entire body aches like a day's toil? Does my sense of I'll be good as new. I can't ignore it, but better take care of it now rather than later when it could already be too late. I think that makes more sense. After several moments, the wariness abates, uh, retreating to the depths of his subconsciousness, but leaving the path open to return next time Mickey Mouse seeks refuge and sleep. Mickey Mouse recalls that he slept peacefully in the defender's heart. Perhaps the priest can explain what has happened. Ah, interesting. Corruption and nightmares. Nightmares and corruption prevent you from resting well. Corruption increases during rest at different rates in different areas. When your corruption reaches first, second, and our third levels, various negative effects are applied. There are three corruption levels in total. The character is assigned to protective rituals who perform these rituals before the party goes to sleep, which reduces the corruption gained. Removing you can fully remove corruption in safe places. You'll discover these areas of respite as you progress through the game. In some locations, you may come across various holy artifacts. Cleansing them or interacting with them will allow you to partially remove your corruption level. Ah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, I got my spells back, got everything back. Okay, cool. Alright, let's level up. See how it goes. Cross-blooded. Right, I have my cross-blooded traits kicking in, I think. And yeah, resistance to cold, this magic. Yeah, good to see. My infernal bloodline here as well. Yeah, let's get my decks up. I think it's up to 16 to plus 3. I don't know. I think that sounds pretty good to me. So yeah, maybe get some world. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Some world. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yep, yeah, my next dexterity is 16 now. It's plus three. Very nice. So now let's look at uh, my Amelia. She can't do anything here. Okay, never mind. Blade Master. Extra attack of opportunity each round uh, by the combat reflexes feet. Oh. Against the weapon specialization feed. Oh, okay, wow, okay. I think that's pretty good, actually, yeah. Extra attack of opportunity each round. Stacks. Huh, okay, yeah. Great. Wait. Plan. Good old Zen Archer. Yeah, I think having dexterities is a little bit more important in this case. Yeah, I'll take dexterity here. For 18 in dex, for plus 4. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, yeah. What else do I want? Yeah, I think that's good. That's good. True strike. Yeah, sure. I mean, if I can land a hit more accurately, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, now we'll Jif. Eldritch Scoundrel. Sure. Sounds good to me. I think that's like an arcane trickster in this world. So, uh, yeah. I think I'm good. Uh, like that. Uh, I guess more, more decks is probably the correct option. I mean, invisibility is pretty good. And yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I think illusion really matches what the bull drift is all about. Being stealthy and all that and sneaking it up on them. Yeah, I think that's good. It's all really nice. It's all very nice. Cool, cool, cool. Zila, Paladin, of course. Uh, what should she get? Maybe more charisma. Maybe more, sh more strength, I think. Maybe it's probably where I want her to be at. So max out my strength soon. It's a 20 strength, I mean, because I don't think there's actually a map. I don't, yeah, there's no there's no cap in Pathfinder, now that I think about it. She can go world, she can go nature as well. Yeah, sure. Seems good, seems good. World, nature, yeah. Complete. Oh, she can start healing people now as well. Got new spells and everything. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Together, we stand. And I level up Ember. Stigmatized Witch, huh. That's cool. Seems good. 
Persuasion. I don't need persuasion on her. I give her more lore religion. Yeah, sure. Something like that. Arcana. Also there, yeah. Yeah, that seems good. That seems good. X. Yeah, sure. I mean, maybe healing is probably a good one to have. Yeah. Cure moderate wounds. Just have her as my healer because I don't have a I don't have a cleric, so I might as well have a healer like that. Yeah, seems good to me. Healing, cure moderate wounds. Yeah, it's good. It's nice. Trust in yourself. Happy mongrels over here. The young mongrel looks around in every direction, but up. Maybe we should go back. This place isn't for us. It's too open. The enemy could come from anywhere, and the air is weird. Why does it keep moving so fast? Another mongrel stretched her ahead, gripping his blade and trembling fist. No, not one step back. This is our test. Don't look at anything but the target. Uh, resist blood raging and wicked light have inside you. Oh, interesting. This is because of my choice. That's cool. Ah, so you made it. Good to see you all. How's old Sol doing? Still waiting and thinking? Well, don't worry. He'll make his mind up soon. You won't be hanging around about underground for much longer. Uh, what are you doing here? The young man turns to you. He has one healthy eye and a lumpy growth where the second should be. It's you. It's thanks to you that we made it to the surface to fight the demons. The shield maze fell, but Sol slowed everything down. He's an old man. He's afraid of everything. But we can't sit in the dark like root vegetables while big things are happening up above. We tried to follow you through the shield maze. We emerged into some kind of fortress, but there were too many demons there. Then we dug out another passage into the city. It took days, but we did it. And we're ready to fight. All right, good, good, good. Uh, right now, we need everyone who can hold a weapon. I have a plan. Go back below ground and wait at the shield maze exit. We'll get the beasts at both ends. Go back. Uh, well, if you're sure, of course we'll go. I mean, uh, yeah, an ambush. Good idea. Yes, I understand. We'll attack from below as soon as we hear the fighting start. The young ones are holding up well, but will they be able to fight in the open? Even I struggle with that. I hope we did the right thing. We are the Crusaders of the Underground. We are. F we will fight like that forebearers did. Yes, good, good, good. We do it More like Crusaders and soldiers happening here uh, for recruiting. Oh, time to leave now. We had a pretty big go of things. All right, this is the party house in the Tower of Estrad. Who? One hour? How was how this? Let's take an hour. Okay. Let's go to the. Let's go to the party house. I hear there's a person waiting for me there. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, I do what I must. Look at this. Who's this? Nino? Is that what I saw? Oh yeah, there it is. Check. Yeah. Baphomet symbol around the neck. Mm -hmm. Check. Crazy eyes. Check. Note to self: Bring a mirror next time to be able to adjust the optimal level of eye craziness. Everything is ready for the experiment. Uh huh. Cool. An audience, problematic but not critical. You there, boy. Stay out of this. It is counterproductive to stand in the way of scientific progress. Who are you calling boy? I'm Mickey Mouse. Hello. Both his friends. That? I don't know her. Greetings, boys and girls. I am your sister in sin, a devotee of Lord Baphomet's dark will, and so on and so forth. She looks like one of us, but she talks kind of weird. Who's there with you? Uh, not Crusaders. Oh, them. Just an audience. They don't matter. Consider them a supplementary component of the coming experiment. Are going to remain silent? Our Lord Baphomet, please be so kind as to undertake a little test of your competency in our wicked cause. Mm -hmm. Let's start with something simple. Simple? So here's my first question. What is Lord Baphomet's favorite weapon? Uh, a mace. We will not answer to you. <laughs> Our Lord can wield any kind of weapon. He is all powerful. Wrong. He wields no weapons at all. He doesn't need any. He just gores his enemies with his horns. Uh, say nothing. These answers are wrong. The correct answer is Isergal, a glaive made of red adamantine. Oh, it's a glaive. Interesting. This experiment has taken quite a surprising turn. I would never have expected the followers of the great Baphomet to be baffled by such a simple question. Fine. Let's recalibrate the difficulty and proceed with the next question. Please name Lord Baphomet's sacred animal. Minotaur. A bull. Of course, everybody knows that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. And a cow. Baphomet's sacred animal is Baphomet himself. None of your answers were correct. Okay. The correct answer is an Aurox. Oh, okay. It appears the experiment has yielded results which are as unexpected as they are incredible. Baphomet's cultists have not the slightest idea about who Baphomet really is, let alone any in-depth knowledge of his ideology or philosophy. 
I'm positive that this news will cause a sensation in widest scientific circles. Mm. Damn it! She's right. <laughs> I'm a shitty <laughs> excuse for a cultist. And my mother used to tell me to become a plowman. Mm. Hey, take it easy! We've only had two questions. You there, come on, ask another one. We'll get the next one. Ask them some more, they might still manage Is it. Is there any sense in continuing? You cannot answer the simplest of questions. I am ashamed of all of you, as cultists and as individuals. That's kind of rude. Please, ask again. I can answer. I'm sure I can. Yeah, they're so <sighs> eager. How do you spell Baphomet's name? B A F A. Oh, screw it. To hell with Baphomet. Oh. I thought it was going to be fun, but instead there are all these questions. Mm. I'm done here. I'm going back to my home village. Back to my mother. Oh, that's smart. Hey, wait! You there! How dare you stir up discord in our ranks! Grab her and tie her up! And her entire entourage, too! The experiment uh, okay. is complete. Unable to deal with the questions, the cultists decide to deal with the examiner instead. A typical reaction for a person who has never been burdened with any intelligence. Wow. Now you're going to start hitting each other, aren't you? Please proceed. I won't interrupt. Okay. This will be quick. Oh, she's just standing there. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Phew. Good. Good, good, good. Oh, hey there. Oh, it's a stranger. The absence of an answer is an answer too. Is that what you said last time? Uh, okay. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Fine, fine, fine. Hello, Nenio. You weirdo. The result help me? is statistically predictable, especially considering their intelligence level. Uh, what about you, boy? Are you ready to answer some questions for the good of science? Let's proceed with the experiment. My first question is simple. Oh, no. Which colors does the goddess Iomade prefer? Quiz for me? I failed it. Who are you? What is all this about? I am the one asking questions here. Answer them, and then I'll satisfy your curiosity. Is it blue and gold? Blue and gold are the colors of the demon lord Ereshkigal, the keeper of the uh, secrets okay. of the universe. Well, I don't know. Nobody's colors are red and white. Well, look, I don't know. <sighs> I suppose I should terminate the experiment due to the subject's utterly woeful performance. Oh, my but upset. don't get upset. We all can't be Ooh, smart. Special Someone colors. Someone has to be strong. I liked how you defeated those cultists. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that I owe you an explanation. My name is Nenio. I am an explorer, a pilgrim, a yet-to-be-recognized scientific luminary, future author of the great encyclopedia Galarianica, and rector of all Absalom's universities at once. Hmm. Future rector, I should say. I also know several spells. Alright. Uh, I have a... Why do you keep calling me boy? I have a name, you know. I apologize for an injury to your ego. How dare you. But your name is irrelevant <laughs> Mickey Mouse. on the grand scale of the universe. Thus, it cannot possibly interest me. I will forget more grand it as soon as I hear it. Than to the avoid universe. unnecessary confusion, I'd prefer to not know it at all. Oh, damn you. Okay, now you can finally tell me what's going on with all these questions. It is so heartening to see you strive for knowledge. I have been conducting an experiment comparing the intellectual abilities of the average cultist with those of the average crusader. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the experiment has proven that the opposing parties possess approximately equal faculties in this regard. A shame, indeed, for I have always claimed that despite the popular beliefs about the limited intellectual abilities of those in the army, at least some of them can be considered educated. It appears I was mistaken. Well, a lot of the cultists are actually turncoat crusaders, apparently, so yeah, it makes sense. So you're trying to call me that I'm mediocre? Let's see for now, shall we join forces? Do you wish to become my follower? To accompany me on my expeditions to the world wound? To assist me in my experiments? Uh, to run errands for me? Perhaps mm, even maybe to not. write down my deepest thoughts for the benefit of future generations? <laughs> maybe not. Oh, how splendid! Okay, of okay. course I agree. Okay, Truth okay, I see. Told, I have no money to pay you. But you will be aiding the progress of science, and that is its own reward. If we join forces, you'll have to follow my instructions during expeditions. Huh? What? Oh, yes, the dangers and these battles. Of course, mm. I will follow your orders. I place my life in your capable hands so I can focus on the things that really matter. Sure, sure. Excellent. Yeah. You're hired. To think that I finally found someone to accompany me. 27 crusaders before you said no. Not one of them saw the undeniable appeal of my offer. <laughs> your first assignment is to take me to a safe place. I have to admit that today's experiment has left me quite tired. All right, sounds good. Uh, it's fine. You you go back to the defender's heart or whatever. Yeah, that's good. 
Good. Oh, wow, look, they're naked and dancing. Wow. What a great party. What a splendid occasion, Count, and this Numerian elixir is quite something. Yeah, that's quite something, alright. <laughs> alright, have one. Oh, here come the demons. Oh, look, there's dark, cute little giant creatures. Oh, and they're killing them. Ah, I smell beauty. They're demons, help! Wonderful, now brace yourself for the smell of your own blood, you gassy eyesore. Oh, jeez, okay. Meditate on your mistakes. Let's go. Okay, let's get in there. Okay. Wow. A lot of, uh, a lot of confusion happening, huh? You miss. Okay, good. You can see it. Oh, man, I'm all the way out here, huh? Can I charge anyone? Let's dig around. Right uh -huh. Drunk nobleman fighting the demons. Okay. They're showing a lot of bravery, these people. Courtesans. Okay, no, those those guys are running. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, okay, no, that, that guy's fighting. The drunk nobles are actually putting up a fight. It's actually hilarious. Cortisan's gonna punch. Oh my god. They're beating up the Cambian wizards. Okay. Okay. Okay, they're just running around. Okay, okay, I see, I see, I see. Oh, everyone having a great time. Oh, jeez, the Cortisan just blew up there, huh? Into blood splatter. Uh. Uh. Not much I can do. Run away. Cortisan still running around. Well, it's good. They're distractions for me. Yeah, Croc Noble's dead. Here, PPU. You're dead. Ooh. Wow, we'll just got smacked around there. Shooting them. Okay. Man, these courtesans have such little hit points. Uh. Drunk Noble, Sila. Maybe hand me a wizard. One from the Divine Zap. Punch. Uh. Not quite. <laughs> They're running up on the stage, okay. Good to see. Uh, okay. The Dresh misses the attack of opportunity on the Drunk Noble. Alright. Drunk Noble. Punch. Nope. Not quite. Aranka. Oh, huh? look at that. That's good. You can see it. Zon. Okay, coming out here. Okay, they're just, you know, just walking around. Wolgif. I'm still okay. Uh, Wolgif. Come out here. You know, blast them with ice. Pop. Hmm, not quite. Amelia, go stab him. You're dead. Sila. Uh, yeah, get the dredge. Good. I'm gonna save as much as I can. But, uh, eh, it's gonna take a while. They're just walking around, running around as the Crusaders come in and save the day, I guess. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Pop, miss, okay, it's fine. He's flat footed, so I guess it's fine. They're in. One last guy to pop. Yep, you're dead. Nice. Good, good, good. Hold on. Let's get to Aranka first because I have a quest for you. Thank you, stranger. The young woman does not look the least bit scared. Her cheeks are flushed and her blue eyes are glittering. For saving us from the demons and for your timely entrance. I swear I don't know how who has enraged who has enraged me more today, the demons or the oh so affable master of the house. I'm a friend of Ilk. He asked me to find and protect you. The young woman clasped her hands together. Ilks is alive, and he's made a brilliant new friend. It's a shame that had to happen now, when the city is under siege by the demons, and those pig-headed inquisitors are pursuing us instead of doing something useful. How'd you end up here? Whole runs hounds found me in the wallflower, and they tried to capture us. I distracted them, and then I lost them in the streets before charming my way into this party. Even if the inquisitors saw where I went, I, I, they wouldn't be allowed to pass the door. Whole run holds no sway among certain members of the aristocracy, so I picked a good place to lie down. That is, until the demons showed up. She shivers and wraps her arms around herself. Do you know where the third of your group is? Wallflower? No idea. If he knows about the demon attack, he won't just hide away. He'll go out and try to help people. If he doesn't know, well, you have no chance of finding him. He's a pretty skilled mage, and I doubt he's going to risk using magic. He'll probably do something the Inquisitors won't expect. Pose as someone, disguise himself. We had a great selection of masquerade costumes in the temple. We have lost in thought for a moment. I know, I'll tie my shawl around your arm. Wallflower gave it to me. He'll spot it right away, and know you're a friend. If I were you, I'd look for him in Canabras Market Square. Oh, what the? I already went there. 
Okay, tell me about yourself. I'm a Ranka, a traveling bard and follower of Desna. Many of the fellow bards are rootless misfits who wander around the world, willing or unable to live a normal life. For me, it's the only partly true. I have a wonderful family, my mother, father, grandmother, my brother. Right now, they are far away. I'm sure they miss me, but they have always supported me here in my vocation, and they let me be free into Rome because they knew that I couldn't be happy while there was so much of the world I hadn't explored and so many places where people might need my help. A bard? It's great. I love singing. Will you sing me a song? Ranka smiles. Sorry, I don't think it's a good time to sing a long, sweeping epic, but I will gladly sing for you some other time. What can I tell you about the master of this house? About the count? Her voice drops a whisper. I wanted to smash a jug over his head about five times already today. He just brings that feeling out in people. It's one of his many talents. Other than that, well, you've probably heard, already heard about the Arende family. All I can say is that the count's servants flee this place like rats like from a sinking ship. No one ever stays here long, even though he pays them extravagantly. I even heard one servant complain that he always feels uneasy in the count's home, like someone is watching him. Unseen eyes staring back at the, <laughs> at the back of his head, even if his back is to the wall. Like, even if he turns around. I don't know if I believe all these tales, but I'm just telling you what I've heard. Yeah, that's a word on the street, too. This mansion is the tastiest morsel in the whole city, but all the thieves are afraid to set foot in the street. That, yeah, even to set foot in the street, okay. What did you decide to break into the wardstone? Yes, magic on you put your lives at risk. Your information could have been a trap set by the demons. But it wasn't a demon trap, Aranka says forcefully, and then her voice softens and her expression turns pensive. You know, living next to the world wound and seeing the powerlessness of the crusaders, it's very hard. We've been trying to defeat the demons for a hundred years now, and we have nothing to show for it. I think that Queen Galfrey and the other leaders think that we can defeat evil if we line up our soldiers in perfect columns and send them marching off with a stirring battle cry. We just need a few more soldiers, a little bit more discipline, but we've been marching for a hundred years, and it's always one step forward and two steps back. And while the soldiers are marching, people like Hullrun are seizing power behind their backs. His fanaticism and cruelty were forged in the same furnace as the Crusader's righteousness. We will never defeat the demons if we keep trying to march down another same path. We need to change tack. To challenge our principles, trust our hearts and our friends, and are not moldering doctrines. We try to listen to any. Uh, we need to listen to any entity that's willing to help us. My friends and I listened, and we trusted, and we tried to change something. At least we tried, even though it didn't work out. Great idea. Marching in straight lines won't work, but let's go attack the demons in a merry band of hopers and dreamers, brimming with enthusiasm and doing whatever we feel like. When the demons see us coming, we'll die of hysterics, and our victory will be complete. Naive children, that's what you are, but I admit, your words stir something in my soul. I wouldn't put you in charge of a military campaign, but I'm proud to fight alongside you. You get somewhere safe on your own. It looks like the Inquisitors aren't busting down the door just yet, and they're not hiding under the bed, so I think I'm safe for now. I'll be fine on my own. I'll go to the temple, to Ilks. The Inquisitors must have searched there by now, and there won't be a second time. They won't go back a second time. Huh. That's a big presumption. Okay, have to go. Good luck, me. Doesn't I'll be with you, stranger. Alright, nice. I have knowledge world. The intricate patterns on the harp dedicate the stars, moon, and butterflies. Hallmarks of the goddess Desna. Ah, nice. That's something for me. Greetings, valiant stranger who has just burst into my life. I am the master of this house. Mm -hmm. Count Dayron Kale, myriad mellifluous monikers Arunde. No need to introduce yourself. I find remembering insignificant details, such as the name of passing acquaintances, such a bore. And both you and Ennio don't like Mickey Mouse, huh? Wow. Bonafide blue bloods and unparalleled aristocracy. All this makes me itch to do something really crass. Ooh, like blow my nose on the curtains. Well, yeah, you do have a nose, even though you're a lizard. What are you waiting for, my squamous squire? The curtains in this room are velvet, but we have some excellent silk ones with gold thread elsewhere in the house. Take your pick. My soft furnishings are yours to do with as you wish. I'm quite sick of the place, truly. I shall either sell it, or burn it to the ground and build a new mansion in its place. Hmm, nice. Now that we've finished with the niceties, tell me this. How did all those thrice-damned demons end up at my soiree? Canabra's lies in ruins, Ascari killed Terendo, left the war so as we captured, and you're asking me why the demons gate crashed your party? Canabra's in ruins? Descari? Well, 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 and I was already lamenting the lack of excitement at my little banquet. Although it must have been tolerable enough if we didn't get notice of a great hulking demon attacking a dragon just outside the window. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. It seems as though Discari's occasion was altogether more of a crush than mine. If you will pardon the pun. Hmm. You don't seem very concerned about the city's fate. I have no friends here whose untimely demise I would care to mourn. The only alarming thing is how easily all this happened. I don't yeah, care for the thought that fair. demons could come easily. calling at my door at any moment. And just think, everyone had so much faith in the ward stones gifted by Iomade's herald, and in the might of our tamed dragon. 
as if there had been no Dresden or a dozen other routes where the demons overcame every defense. Mm -hmm. The Orendes are one of the most ancient and noble families in Mendiv. They are related by blood to Queen Galfrey herself. The Count is the last remaining member of his dynasty. The rest all perished around 10 years ago. In the tragedy at the family seat, Heaven's Edge, the demons got past the defenses and massacred everyone inside. Mm. Wow. I thank you for providing your friend with that helpful summary, my lady. I believe I've seen you before with that hilarious buffoon, Horgus Gworm. I sincerely hope you are not engaged in any kind of sordid arrangement with him. <laughs> the thought of something so splendid in proximity to something so grotesque makes me feel quite ill. You deserve a better fate than that, that no is doubt. A, that is a funny guy. <laughs> Your civility knows no bounds, Count. I most assuredly do not have any arrangement with Master Gworm. Uh... Look, uh, I wish I know about you, Count, apart from the fact that you're very highborn, very rich. As a child, I had my very own pony. Nice. But I always dreamed of having a lamb. Oh. I was never allowed one. Sheep were seen as peasant animals, utterly unsuitable for the scion of a noble line. The trauma haunts me to this day. I think of it every time I have roast lamb for dinner. Is that lamb? Oh, maybe it is. Yeah. I'm sorry that happened to you. Such a sad story. <laughs> I had not even the slightest intention of upsetting such a lovely child. I'm not lovely. Some people have even called me a scarecrow before. <laughs> That's patently absurd. Why, you can't possibly be a scarecrow with a crow following you around. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry if I failed to sate your curiosity. I loathe talking about myself to people I don't know. Even more to those I do know. The only thing worth knowing, aside from the fact that I am a highborn and filthy rich, is that I dislike Puritans and demons in equal measure. Well, perhaps demons a tad more. I could say this, but I feel like, nah, he's not going to be grateful whenever, so, uh, you can go to the Defender's Heart under protection of Earbud Tearblade and the Eagle Watch. I thank you for the invitation, but I am not quite as desperate as I may seem. At times, it is better to be surrounded by the repugnant mugs of demons than the sour and dour physiognomies of Iomidae's righteous paladins. Damn, these are crazy words are what busting out. What about my physiognomy? Sour enough for his lordship? Don't worry, another few minutes with the dazzling count here, and it'll sour like weak old milk. What's this? An attractive paladin with a sense of humor? You're a veritable walking scandal. Either way, my mansion is now safe. I have a pair of half-decent guards. I just need to drag them out of the storeroom and bring them to their senses. I ordered them to drink a love potion, you see? For reasons which seemed extremely witty at the time and in the state of inebriation I then found myself in. They can guard the house while the valorous paladins beat back the demon assault. They will beat them back, yes? Uh, yeah. As regards myself, I feel like stretching my legs. I know rudimentary divine spells, I am no friend to demons, and I elevate any society that I deign to grace with my presence. I shall accompany you, only for a short time, of course. Mm. I have no desire to remain at the vanguard for a protracted period. What say you, my ephemeral but highly diverting acquaintance? After all, Lord Descari spoiled my party. I now burn with the desire to spoil his. Uh, thoughts? I don't like this guy much at all. Not even because of his personality, but just... Mm -hmm. I sense something dark about him. He's got glowing eyes. I guess thumping him one next time he comes out with more aristocratic witterings is not allowed? All the more reason to take him with us. If we don't kill him, the demons surely will. Lan flashes a cocky smile. He has all these friends at his party, and he still looks so lonely. We can take him with us. Maybe it will make him feel better? Don't ask me. Having him tag along would be like going for a nighttime stroll through the back alleys with a diamond tiara on your head. Even I don't like that kind of attention. <laughs> the Count's presence can only benefit us. I think we should say yes. Alright, sure. Deal. Capital. 
Good acquaintances Happen. that begin and end at just the right moment often leave the most pleasant memories. Wouldn't you say? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Cool. I'm getting a lot of options now for for new people. Uh. Yeah. Let's nice see. All right. Let's go to the Tower of Estrad. Museum research, right? I think I have to go here in Gorm's Mansion as well. Tira Blade Residence, does I have to go there? Uh, let's go to Gorm's Mansion first, actually, because that's only one hour away. Yeah, let's go here. All right, hey, Orgus Gorm. Want to give me a thousand gold or something? Uh, yeah, there you are at last. You certainly took your time. I thought perhaps you got lost on the way here. I'm sorry, you're getting not drawing you a map. Orgus's relief is palpable, even though his grousing, even through his grousing. The tragedy he once had such a sorry state, and I always had a few guards in my service, you know? I hope those blockades died honor those blockheads died honorably, and I didn't simply flee at the first sign of danger. Orgus turns towards the corridor with a pensive expression on his face. My manor, you see, contains several items that are of great value to me. I wish to retrieve them before they are discovered by my fellow citizens, who, in the current chaos, seem to have been th taken to thieving and marauding like ducks to water. So here's what I want you to do. To stroll, take a stroll through my house, peek into the room, and if you find some, anyone, kill them on the spot. That'll teach them any other opportunists to stay away from Horgus Quirm's manor. While I was standing here by the entrance, I could clearly see the sound of someone rooting around inside. Any possessions of mine you find in there, you can keep. It's all as good as lost to me anyway. While you're sure the house is empty, you give me a signal from my study window. Wave a torch around or something like that, you can decide when you get there. Ah, this should be good. I'm always up for poking around a fancy manor. What are these valuable items? They're worth risking their life oh, going back to the manor. Never you never you mind. I'm paying you to key out the ruffians inside, not to ask questions. Borgus glares at you for a second before dropping his gaze. In any case, uh, you will learn what this is all about as soon as you've cleared the study for wait for me, so restrain your curiosity for now. You're sad you're sad about your things because of them. You want us to kill people. <laughs> Don't lecture me about right and wrong. It gives me, if it gives you some comfort, let me assure you that marauders are not innocent little lambs. Far from it. They would gladly kill you and get their hands on my possessions. Mark my words. Okay, all right, I understand. Well, get on with it. Or are you waiting for a special order? I shall await your signal. And good luck with there, I suppose. All right, thanks, Horgus. Give Horgus the signal. Let's do it. The mansion is clear. You're alive. Fine work. Mm-hmm. What if we tricked him and the mansion wasn't clear? Would he still pay me? My secret door remains unopened. Fantastic. I wasn't too late. Mm hmm. If you'll follow me. Oh, okay. Family secret about to be revealed. It's so thrilling. Who's that? Is that. Is that Camellia? Yeah, that's Camellia. Okay, interesting. Let's see it. Alright, Horgus, what do you gotta say? The paintings are right where I left them. Very good. Horgus Worm owes you there for your help. Uh, there's something off about the paintings in front of you. The blonde-haired boy in the Gorm family color zone look like the Horgus in the least. The family portrait depicts Horgus alongside an unknown half-elf half -elf woman and a little girl who bears a striking resemblance to Camellia. Who's that in the paintings, Horgus? So you've noticed. It seems there's no point in hiding any anymore. Horgus is silent for a few moments and then sighs and presses his lips into a hard line. You see, I have two secrets. Camellia is, in fact, my daughter, and I am not the real Horgus Gorm. Oh, Camellia is your daughter. Yes, Ill illegitimate, that is to say. Hilarious' cheeks reddened. She has resided in the house since birth. The staff thought she was a niece or the daughter of a friend who died in the Crusades. I never disabused them of their notions. Her mother, Iris, was a half-elf of humble origins. She worked in the gardens here. I wanted to unite the Gwyrm family with another noble line. The Gwyrm name could not be permitted to mix with commoners and thereby plunge into insignificance. Iris did not protest, and we successfully hid our connection. And when Camellia was born, I did not claim her as my own. As far as Mendev knows, Camellia is the daughter of a Gwyrm family servant who died over ten years ago. And before you start telling me what a terrible father I am, I want to tell you something. My daughter wanted for nothing. All her whims were fulfilled as quickly as they arose. I hired the best teachers and bought her the best books. She always ate well and had warm clothes. Isn't that what a parent does? You discovered my most terrible secret. Father cares so much about the Gwyrm name that he raised me in our mansion, hiding me away from the whole world. I'll always be grateful to my father for everything he's done for me, even if Mendev's society disapproves of some of his decisions. Would it be insolent of me to beg for your discretion regarding what you know about us? So you're not Horgus Gwyrm. My real name is Darian Witt. My parents were the servants of the real Gwyrms at their mansion on the ed eastern edge of Mendev. The Gwyrms were generous and noble, but short-sighted. Short they burned through most of their fortune in charity when instead they should have taken better care of guarding the mansion. When I was ten or so, I used to play in the garden with the real Horgus Gwyrm, who was just my age. I have no idea where the demons came from. Horgus ran on the, uh, to the mansion, and I bolted in the opposite direction. He was captured and killed, and I wasn't. Horgus shrugs apologetically. 
Crusaders came from the nearest city to aid us, but I was the only one who survived. They asked me my name, and I said I was Horga Squirm. That's the whole story. <laughs> Such a heart-wrenching tale. It never fails to bring tears to my eyes. You are in no position to judge me, Camellia. Hergus's hands curled in the fists, but her voice sounded more tired than angry. You're right, I'm not. A golden opportunity fell right into your laps. Nothing shameful in seizing your chance. Yeah, you know what? I think that's what Mickey Mouse would say, right? Nothing shameful in seizing your chance for a better life. <laughs> exactly, I wish I had your luck. Uh, that was my thinking at first. Horgus released a quality laugh, but the years have given me a different view on things. It's difficult for me to speak openly about secrets which I've kept all these years. I've been hostage to them my entire life, strange as it sounds. I promise to keep your secret, Camellia. A hint of a smile plays in Camellia's mouth. Please accept my humblest thanks. Oh. Okay, uh, Horgus course a wary look at her, but remains silent. What's it like to live your whole life under someone else's name? When I was a boy, I used to hate Horgus. <laughs> the condescension, most of all. The condescension, yeah, the con condescension, yeah, condescension. Most of all, the pity on his face, the smile, his smile when he called me to join him in his games, the difference in our birthright wasn't fair. The envy clouded my mind. When the demons killed him and not me, and I thought it was a gift of fate, I seized my good fortune with both hands and never let go. When I told them my, my name was Horgus Worm, the only heir to the vast fortune of the Worm family, on that day, life was fair. <laughs> Unfortunately, it took me many years to see the generosity behind the conden condescension condescension and feel the compassion behind the pity i just i discovered it far too late that horgus was my friend even when i didn't feel my in the, even when i didn't feel myself his i never accepted the hand of friendship he offered until it was far too late but now what can i do reveal the truth reject the name and allow it to sink into oblivion would my friend horgus want this horgus shakes his head tired i bear the name of horgus worm with the pride and dignity it deserves as a banner on the battlefield i will multiply its merits the worm family will not be forgotten i will serve horgus worm hmm but the result... Yeah, Horgus attempts to smile, but the result is pathetic. So what are you planning to do now? Well, first and foremost, I shall reward you handsomely for your help, and then I shall burn these portraits. I have kept them all this time of our misplaced sentiment, but they know that they serve no purpose now. My ravaged home will luckily be picked to the bone, and this secret room will inevitably be discovered, and I don't want these paintings to be seen by anyone else. I see. Well, you certainly earned your payment. Here, here's a pleasure doing business with you. Orgus is silent for you a while. Camellia, I can tell from your face that you enjoyed fighting the demons in this worthy party. I can only ask you one thing. Are you certain? Camellia doesn't answer, but looks at Orgus with a half-smile lingering on her lips. Well then, clearly I can no longer keep you safe. Our house is destroyed, our servants scattered or dead. Orgus stares at his daughter's face as though he is seeking the answer to an unasked question. Then he turns his attention to you. But now, follow me. We'll make sure that no one ever again discovers the secrets of Orgus Squirm. Ah, okay. I just disappears. Okay, he just plucks it in. Okay. What's in his inventory? Alright, nice. Nice. Cool. That's a good story. I like it. It's uh, very, very heartwarming. Okay. Scorched frames and burned canvases. No one will ever know what happened. these paintings showed. Well, that's that then. Thank you for your help. Farewell and watch over Camellia. I'll try my best. So I guess that's it. Wow. Okay. Let's go. Dragging down Thal, a young no, he has several methods of concealing his spell. Can probably find the market square. This is the market square, right? Yeah. Knobris Crusader. You. The eyes of a young lad peer out at you from under the massive helmet. At this proximity, it's obvious that his armor is ill fitting and mismatched. And the helmet specifically is either very poorly or made or theater prop. Pardon me, I saw you with that shawl. Does that mean you're a friend of Ar Aranka's? What am I saying? Of course it does. So. Yep, hello. Oh. Uh oh. Are those Inquisitors? That's not good. That's Hull Run? Uh, that's really not good, huh? The young man's speech is interrupted by the arrival of a new cast of characters. People in the robes of Iomedes, Inquisitors from all sides are surrounding him. Adept Thal of the Temple of Desna, you are under arrest and suspicion of treason and eating the demons. You have one minute to come quietly, drag your feet, uh, and we'll count that as an attempt to resist justice. Prelate Hullrun appears behind his people, and here's a traitor who almost corrupted the Dwarves Stone from with his magic. You didn't think that the disorder and demonic presence in the city would distract us from pursuing traitors, did you? The youth's eyes go wide, he's not clearly not knowing what to do. Demons are running amok all over Canabras, now is not the time for settling scores. On the contrary, now it's a perfect time to catch the demons' accomplices, while they're overconfident and letting their masks slip. Treat him fairly. Your paranoia has poisoned your mind. I've had enough of this. Uh, do I really want that? Arresting and returning is right, but treat him fairly. Sure. I do who I do hope I do hope you realize that by defending this traitor you make yourself as accomplice, but even if you don't realize it's no matter, seize the rabble rousers. Uh oh. Ah crap. I have to fight Hell Run now. Well, I really didn't want to do this, Hell Run, but uh leaving me with very little choices, you know. Let's do it. Wow, these guys are beefy, huh?
Nice. Into the fray. Distract them for me. You. You. Okay. Uh, I guess I keep vulnerability hexing. Uh, okay, fine. Do someone else then. <laughs> Damn saving throws. Camellia. I don't know. Stab hell run. Yep. Never mind. Uh, jolt him, I guess. I don't know. One damage. Nice. Hull run. Ah, that's not good. Oh no, Hull run gets up. That's yeah. Time Come on, no, oh, stop it. Strike, oh, oh, stop it. Stop it. Uh, let's see. Hold on, you're facing scream, maybe. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Melia's on Greece. Uh, Quisitor's on the Greece. Judgment. Protection. Ooh. Jolt. Okay. Zila. No. I'll run. Okay. Very not good. Ugh. Okay. Zap him. Okay, run away now. Amelia. Still in there. Okay. Ow, on the floor. Hmm. Casilla is a little bit wounded now. Eh, let's go magic missiles. Yeah. Casilla, all on the floor. I'll run on the floor. We'll jiff. Stand up. Oh, okay, stand up now. Nice. Dab. Ah! Damn you. 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 Okay, miss. Surrender or else. Okay, nope. Not good. Not good at all. Got protection on them. Out. Standing up. Stop. I'll run. Mickey Mouse. I'm still imagining this house still on him. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Wool Jeff. One. Nah. Oh, Hellrun said. Okay. Well, Hellrun said. Sorry, Hellrun. You're too much of an asshole for me. Uh, kind of liked him, though. <laughs> Ow. Sila. I'm dying. Uh. Uh, fine. That. Oof. Ooh, Thal. Okay. This is unfortunate. Jolt. Miss. Okay. Thal. <laughs> Missing. Distract them for me. Ah, jeez. Okay. Divine Zap, please. Oh, I got him. I got him. All right, Camellia, come here. Stop. Miss. No. Go on. Zap. Every bit counts, huh? Foul up on the floor. Stand up. We'll jiff. Time to share your treasures. Stab him. Phew. Alright, nice. Alright. Hey, Thal, how you doing? The young man glances at the bodies in quiz and turns around. Oh, Desna, why in doing what is right must we also often force to spill blood where it is not necessary? Can this really be the price of the true path and of freedom? Anyway, thank you. I've been done for without you. Clash with the Inquisitors was inevitable? Maybe, but it wasn't for a stunt with a wardstone, which we didn't even save. Anyway, I only have myself to blame. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going back to the Temple of Desna. I want to be alone with the goddess and reflect on all that has happened. Okay, nice. I'm always ready. Alright, yeah, everyone's here. Everyone I saved. Well, how are y'all doing? Ilks, Aranka, and Thal sit by side by side like sparrows on tree branch. They seem happy despite the chaos going around them. If it isn't our rescuer, it's good that you've come. Sit with us. Uh, stop. Uh, I'm pleased to say you're all fine, but there's still much more work to be done in the city. That's true, Ilx nods, but we can't we give you a gift before you go. We wouldn't give this to anyone apart from the person who bravely defended us from injustice, the injustice inflicted by the people who should be the pillars of law and order in the city. Our gift, Aranka cuts in, is a song. We call it Starward Gaze, and it came to us from the true servants of Desna from our domain Elysium. The song can gift a soul renewed vitality. Just listen. Do I get a gift? Can I rap my song for something else? Say, can I got sure even snack of some kind? 
Those unschooled in the arts can possibly appreciate that some songs are worth more than gold. None of them. Uh, and those who spend their lives eating three square miles a day and sleeping on silk sheets don't realize that sometimes a crust of bread is worth more than gold. Paying no attention to what was chattered, the young woman continues to sing. Sing the song after Ranka? Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Feeling it somewhere within my heart, and then... Oh. When the music stops, Mickey Mouse finds himself in a place that looks nothing like the ruins of Canabras. It all happens in the space of a blink. He closes his eyes on the world and reopens them on an another one entirely. A delicate twilight envelops this new world with streaks of moonlight streak uh, breaking through the gloom. Mickey Mouse is standing in a shallow stream of murmuring water deep in a forest. There is no one else around. Garlands of unfamiliar climbing tree pl climbing plants twine around the trunks of gigantic trees, and dangling from their branches are vines woven into what look remarkably like swings. A carpet of fragrant grass is spread out at the tree's roots with small islands of uh, phosphorescent moss and lichen and lichen not dotted here and there. Small smooth stones with a strange mirrored surface are scattered across the stream bed in which Mickey Mouse is standing. The stones catch this light shining down from the heavens, making them gleam silver and making the ordinary little brook look like a stream of darkness carrying a sprinkling of stars through the night. Mickey Mouse is sure that he has never seen this place before, and yet it all feels so familiar. It is the manifestation not of dreams and fantasies, but of that but of that special way of looking at the world that only child children possess. With when a glint of light reflected off a piece of glass becomes a fallen star, when an oddly shaped stone can be remarkably can be a remarkable artifact, and when every shadow or twist in the path promises mystery or incredible adventure, a single glance to the forest stream brings this feeling rushing back. Hmm. Unheardly, make his way along the stream bed, taking in his surroundings. Realizing this, Mickey Mouse decides to clamber up to the nearest tree, plant a vine swing. Hmm. Sure, on a vine swing. The stream of star stones babbles away below the swings begins to giantly move, arcing up and smoothly down again. What lies be behind the thrill that this simple pastime gives mortals? Is it the sensation of flight weightlessness, the hunger for freedom and flight? Whatever it may be, Mickey Mouse quickly realizes that he is no longer alone. They come closer, not attempting to hide, stepping lightly on the mossy carpet, leaping from branch to branch, or flitting through the air. The creatures are thoroughly bizarre, as though they were deliberately conceived or try to try the sanity of every taxonomist on the planet. One has the fluttering wings of a butterfly on its back, another has the tail of a dozen different animals, while a third boasts tresses of streaming water, hooves instead of feet, and springing clover growing all over his skin. We have a visitor, exclaimed one of the strange creatures, and immediately pushes us a swing, helping it pick up speed. Where am I? Don't you know where you are? asked the creature in amazement. There are planes of breathtaking beauty and planes of astonishing wonders, but only Elysium is woven from the craving for beauty, from the belief in wonders. That is where you are, in the most peaceful and most wonderful corner of the plane of boundless freedom. Who are you? Don't you know where you are? Oh, sorry. Uh, we are Azadas, the children of freedom, says one of the creatures carelessly swinging from the branches of a tree. This forest is our home for today. Tomorrow our home can be a lake one or uh, 100 leagues to the south, or an underground cave in the azure ocean, or in a castle of clouds that scatter in the dawn breeze. How did I get here? We don't know how you, uh, how you came to be here, says the creature with a dozen tails, smiling. Mortals rarely come to Elysium during their lifetime, but here you are, which means that something must have brought you something in your soul. If your soul did not harbor even the slightest spark of freedom, yearning for compassion, you never would have found your way here. Now that you know the answer, tell us, what do you want? Uh... Um... I wish I could stay here forever? Eh. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like Alice in Wonderland, right? The creature with the butterfly wings who has the hit throw remain silent gives the visitor a serious look and nods to himself. I smell the burning blood and tears of the place you have come from. It clings to you. Your soul yearns for beauty and freedom. That is good, but uh, the souls meant for Elysium would never turn their back on suffering and strife. You must return to where you came from, for now at least. But would you like to take something from this place as a memento? The question hangs in the air, and though the words that Mickey Mouse utters next are merely words, not a spell nor a military command, they seem to have equal bearing on destiny and life. Sure. Yes, I really want to. These Zadas draw closer. Take this memory with you. Take this light. Take the knowledge of that any pebble struck by a moonbeam can be equal to any star. Take the understanding that you cannot fight evil with clever plans until you have conquered evil within your soul. And your soul cannot be cleansed of evil if it is not free. Take our song. Remember it. And it may help you, but 
uh, but only when you are true to that which brought you beneath the sky. Oh, wow. I, I didn't know I had to walk the Azada path. That was, that was a lot simpler than I thought. Uh, hopefully the Lich path will be, you know, even easier. Uh, all three adapts, adapts look at you wide-eyed. What, what just happened? For a second, you were surrounded by light, and we heard music, like the music of Elysium itself. I had a vision. I was in Elysium, and the Azada spoke to me. The adepts exchanged a look of astonishment. I swear it's a sign. A sign that Desna herself has turned her gaze on you. You helped us and protected Wallflower from the Inquisitors, even though it wasn't your responsibility. The goddess couldn't fail to acknowledge such a noble soul. We might be getting ahead of ourselves, but there are many powerful entities in Elysium besides Desna, but of course, there must be a reason for it. I am so glad we met you, friend, and not just because I'd be suffering at the Inquisitor's hands right now if we hadn't, but also because you helped me overcome my doubts. We will always remember you, no matter what. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now let's, let's go to the Tower of Estrad. Alright, here we are. Tower, Tower of Estrad. Oh, wow. Angel guy. An armor burns a city that should never have fallen. Fate shows no mercy. Hmm. Yep. Fate is a cruel mistress. It's true, it's true. But then again, you're an angel. Shouldn't you, you know, do something? Clouds may veil the star, but nothing can hide the light in someone's soul, and I see this light in you. Nice. Thanks, bald person. Uh, more people. We still stand shoulder to shoulder with you against evil. Oh. Well, that's nice. I feel like I'm evil, though. I'm Mickey Mouse. I hear the echo of a familiar voice. I feel the warmth of my kindred flame. My brother, we will help you. Ah. Oh. Awfully nice of you. Okay. 30 minutes for angelic aspect. Vision of the Herald. Huh. Here we go. Wherever you are, keep quiet. There's a horde of enemies just beyond this door. Come over here and we'll see there's a handy way up. Uh, uh yeah. Nearby, yeah, okay. Who are you? Be quiet and watch. This is the best part. Oh, look at that. There's a lot of cultists. Get it together, idiots. No more looting. You're all here to sit tight and wait for the orders to attack the defender's heart. It's the last bastion of the Crusader resistance. We'll flatten them and claim our victory. Ha 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 ha. Into the abyss with all Crusaders and the Defender's Hearts. Keyless, the city is ours already. Now it's time to enjoy the spoils. Split us into groups quickly. I'll tell you where to go and what to bring back. Baxon, you idiot. Go back to Baphomet. He must be missing his lapdog. Everyone here will be following my orders. My orders. I'm in charge. Everyone here will be following my orders. I'm in charge, right? We won't submit to you, you dirty Descarite. Keep out of this, Tequilas, or I'll curse all your extremities to wither and drop off. Everyone listen to me. What we're gonna do is... There's like interesting like factionism within the Abyssal Hordes. It's good to see. Looking for a fight, Vaxxon? Well, you've got one. Oh, they're gonna punch each other. Oh, okay, never mind. They're gonna bring out their weapons. Well, nice, okay. Oh, wow, you got him. Had enough worm? I'm in charge here. Kills is the strongest. No looting, only slaughter. We're gonna sit here and wait for the command to attack. The defender's heart will fall. Oh, and he gets back up. <laughs> the clapping stops. All right. I'd stay away from there oh, right now. Rebor. The tower is the main stronghold of the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth and their allies. Going up against that many of them would be suicide. I have a better idea. Oh. If the demons and their mortal agents were better organized, the Crusaders would have been crushed long before now. But they're always trying to spread in every direction. Right now, in every corner of the city, there are demons like Kylas who are trying to consolidate their forces to launch a joint attack on the Defender's heart. Who are you? Rabor. I'm a contract killer who's been hired to kill that demon that oh. just walloped that other one. I've tracked him all the way here, and was planning to kill him when that crowd showed up, so I had to pull back. I see, I see. What do you suggest? Don't even think about trying to take them all on single-handed. You'll be mincemeat. Better to warn the Crusaders in the Defender's heart that the demons are planning to attack. And later, once the attackers have been taken care of, it'll be much easier to sweep through this tower and eliminate the Defenders left behind. That would be sensible. Like when dueling with rapiers. One doesn't lunge, but waits for the opponent to strike and leave themselves open. Hmm. Yeah, exactly like that. Uh -huh. yeah. Or like in cards, wait for your <gasps> opponent to play his hand, uh -huh. and then dive under the table, grab the pot, and run. I see, I see. Thanks for the advice. The dwarf bows his head politely, 
Who hired you? I'm afraid that's confidential. As a professional, I'm obliged to keep my client's name a secret. We could attack them together. I have no desire to die okay. today. If you choose to go in there, I'll take advantage of the opportunity, of course. I'll kill Kylas and get back here as quickly as I can. I'm not going to fight any of the others. I don't work for free. Interesting, okay. Hmm. The city is burning. People are dying. And you're thinking about how to fill your pockets? Yes. So what? This is life. Listen here, girl. If you're so eager to save someone, go and do it. And don't waste your breath preaching at me. Mm, Alright, I'm going now. I hope you act wisely. You're so sad. Please take care. Thanks, Ember. What are you doing here, girl? This is no place for people like you. Go. Hide somewhere safe. Push the column. Interesting. Quiet steps. Mm, try that. Ready. I can push this pillar? Can't Will I roll it down? Me. Oh, yeah, I can. Wow. That's funny. <laughs> I just pushed it on of them. Nice. Oh, there they go. I'm not in combat either. That's funny. It's on. You've crossed the wrong shoot him. Pop that guy. All right, nice. Let's do this. Uh, Great Frost. Oh. Good sneak attack. Good seal. Go. Oh, they got stunned him. Ember. Yeah, sure. Just waddle over. Uh, I don't have my bold strength anymore. That's unfortunate. It's fine. Just uh, I just go up. Just go up. Mickey Mouse coming in. Uh, Frost, one damage. Ooh, fireball. That's not good. That hurts. Hurts a lot. Uh, right. Burning hands, you. I'm not close enough. Really. All right. Well, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Drop him on the floor. Seal up. You're dead. Go this way, Sila. Alright, nice. Ember, move up. Divine Zap. Sure, Divine Zap the Dretch. Pop. <laughs> Hurt him a little bit. Camellia, stab him. Here comes the Dretches. Oh, they're dead. Good opportunity attacks. Discari Cultus. Oh, I got him there, huh? Not oh, facts on as well. Nice. And Grease is so strong in this game, man. <laughs> it's so insanely strong. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, he does have electricity. Cool. But well, maybe I should use acid on him. Uh huh. Oh man, they really went for plan. They're gunning for him, poor guy. Uh, go here. Good. Oh, nice. Hit him a little bit. Dretch. Mm, we'll just Good. What was he? Ah, Sila, how dare you. Okay, shoot you. Yep, Ember. Good, good, good. Good hits. Uh, Camellia. Go to the stretch. Yep, you're gonna fall into grease, of course. You won't survive mm, missing the dredge. Not good. Then I hit in there. Dead. See? It's not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, backs on. Oh, yeah, I should have. Okay, whatever. It's fine. What's that? Acid arrow. Huh. That's spooky. Uh. Cover me, all right. The abra, the abracandelu. Uh. Uh. Slumber. Can I try slumbering you? Nope. Nope. Not gonna work. What? Okay. You. You. Nice. Uh, let's go kill. Let's finish him off matching missiles. Good. All right, spread out. Just in case he has like more fireballs. Wolf zone. Come on, get up, Camellia. The spirits demand your blood. Nope, can't do that. Shoot. Shoot again. Ah, you're gone. Gotcha. All right. 
look at the tower basement some cool demon stuff going on oh look at that it's a guy a bald man a pale and frightened half elf looks at you warily. His face is twisted to grimace, like he just ate something slimy. Hey, who are you? Uh, praise Baphomet. What are you doing here? Did Faxon send you? I heard a noise outside, but I was busy making a list of relics. Did something happen? Uh, who are you? I'm Telmor, the scribe and senior aide to Lord Zenthir, the plagued one. And do forgive me, but Faxon has been sent to this command, has he not? Where is he? Uh, what are you doing here? I'm compiling a list of the valuable crusader artifacts that Lord Xanthia has ordered that everything of you should be transferred to Canabras and saved from the looting and destruction. We chose the museum as a place to collect and sort through the trophies. Unfortunately, the local thieves have proved quicker with the, off the market than the demons. They ransacked the museum in the first few hours of the assault, but there are some obje objects of interest among the exhibits they left behind. Uh, the uh, exhibits they left behind. The museum custodian has been this. Uh, the museum custodian has been kind enough to advise me on those. But where is Faxon? Ha, ah, finest thieves and Mendev, turn your back and everything that isn't nailed to the floor will be gone when you turn around again. The demons have no chance against them. Masters of the trade, we are. There you go, bragging again, dummy. Thieving has never been that it's anything but harm. Trust me, if you have fought the way you thieve, now that might be useful. No, thanks. Every person has their calling and this is mine, but imagine if you fought as well as we thief. <laughs> Where is the museum custodian? Over in the gallery, I deceived him. I told him I was a crusader. It wasn't difficult. The old geezer is out of his mind, so tell me, where's Faxon? Alright. Uh... You know what? Let's just attack, attack him. Hello. The half elf leads back nimbly, pulling a sharp sheep leaf as he goes. No, I have valuable letters from Lord Xanthi here. I must destroy them. He just balls the pages up in his fist and shoves them into his mouth and begins furiously chewing like a hamster. Ah, damn it. A moment later, half eyes with all's bulge and he opens his mouth, that, which is stuffed with masticated paper. He tries to cough, but nothing comes out. The failed saboteur looks at you in desperation. His eyes are streaming, his face is growing paler by the second, and he falls to his knees. A strangled wheeze emerges from behind the wad of wet paper. His expressions veer from the hilarious to the grotesque as he signals for help. Ah, uh, want some salt or pepper with that. Now, I've never tried eating paper myself, but a little seasoning uh, goes a long way, whatever the meal. <laughs> You silently watch the half elf gasp for breath. The half elf falls into convulsion, grappling at his throat. For all that time, he looks at you in terror, the bystander to his horrific demise. What an idiot. God has punished them all. Now at least we can see the kind of mind that swears allegiance to Demon Lord. I wish all cultists were as dumb as this one. It all ends quickly. The half elf's lifeless eyes stare up at you in a silent rebuke. <laughs> Alright, fine. Largely destroyed letter, damn. Uh, that's Rook's life. Eh. Yeah, breastplate and everything. Uh, largely a short letter. Let's see this. A lot of crumbled pieces of paper with visible bite marks and traces of saliva. The writing is blurred and indistinct, but most of the words are completely illegible. But some fragments are still intact. Carefully pack up all the relics and valuable magic items and hand them over to the same courier that brought you my potions. Later, I may carve you, uh, carve out some time away from my scientific research to sift through the detritus you managed to steal from the Crusaders. I might as well not bother since your finds will almost certainly be of no use to me unless I find myself in dire need of a paperweight. So this patient uh, keeps you occupied and gives me an invaluable opportunity to work without you sticking your nose into my, into my experiments. Um, once again, remind you that the rest of the text is ineligible. Illegible. Illegible. Only a few more sentences can be read towards the end. The punishment will be painful, brutal, and utterly inhumane. Remember this. Good luck with conquering whatever you are conquering out there. Xanthir Vang. Okay. Fine. Good old Xanthir Vang. Oh, look at this. Lady Calandra's chain shirt. Plus two mithril shirt. Oh, man. Arkin spell shirt. Oh, nice. That's so good. Ah, oh, so good. Oh, nice longbow as well. I got so many good upgrades. I should have come here earlier. What the heck? I remember this exhibit, it was donated to the YouTube 22, no, 21 years ago. Held on, okay, held on. Old man looks around you absentmindedly, shrinks away as you get closer. His head seems to shake uncontrollably, but his hands are surprisingly deft and assured as they level a magic wand at you. Stay back. Which are you, robber or demon? Hey, hey, take it easy, Graham. So what's, uh, that's the way it is, eh? You see horns and you think thief or demon? Quit scaring the old man, dummy. Have you seen your horns? Then, how should I put this? Don't exactly inspire trust in a city that's currently overrun with demons. Hey, there are horns, and then there are horns. I'm not gonna hurt you. The old man goggles goggles at you in terror, but he doesn't lower his hand. A rustling comes from somewhere behind him. Rats. The old man wheels around fearfully and peers in the direction you came the, the sound came from. The hand holding the, the hand holding the wand gradually falls to his side. When he turns back to you, there's no fear in his question, only vague confusion. You, I'm sorry, I was distracted. What were we talking about? Who are you? The old man loses one confusion. I, I think expression goes distraught and mournful, as though he is on the verge of crying. I forget. His gaze falls on the piece of cloth carefully stitched to his cloak, which reads Teldon, Tower of Ashtar Museum Custodian. Aha! I am Teldon, the custodian here. My memory isn't what it once was. My faculties are failing me. 
but at one time my mind could cut like a di like a diamond. I was a battle mage, one of the few who survived the battle of the Lost Chapel. But I'm an old man now. Sometimes I set down my keys one moment and the next I can't remember where I've put them. With a pleased smile, the old man pulls a heavy set of keys from his pocket and proudly shows them to you. Here, they are my keys, my lo little lovelies. I wouldn't give, I would never give them uh, you away to anyone. Remembering himself, the old man hastily stows the key back in his pocket. What are the keys for? Oh, these keys are for everything. I can open every door in Tower Feshtrad with these. The museum custodian on duty must carry these keys at all times and never be parted from them, not even for a second. And why is that? Because if the keys were left unattended, they would be pinched by thieves, wouldn't they? Thieves who'd strip the museum of all its treasures. What are you all looking for? <laughs> what are you looking at me for? I see. Give me the keys. Out of the question. According to the museum protocol, custodian does not <laughs> have the right to hand over the keys to another. I am personally responsible to the safety of the exhibits and the storeroom. Uh, let's home with C plus 14. It's Mickey Mouse. Don't you understand? This museum holds things that could help in the fight against the demons. Exhibits are not to be handled without the permission of the <laughs> museum management, and they're certainly not to be taken outside the museum itself. Uh, alright, let's go. Trickery. Steal the keys. Yes. <laughs> Zeldon <laughs> looks around carefully, and, and as he does, your fingers slip quite silently into his pocket. When the old costume turns back to you, the large bunch of keys is already tucked safely beside your belt. Zeldon shakes his head in confusion. Yes, yes, yes. Why did the demons spare you? The museum looks like you're surprised. Demons? There have been no demons in this museum. I heard them break into the tower, but then everything went quiet. Then a very polite young fellow came along, a half-elf. He said Canabras was under attack, but that the Crusaders have already recaptured the tower. He said he'd been sent... Uh, to oversee the evacuation of the museum. He was very pleased to find me here. I proved a very useful resource. I showed them all the most valuable relics, explained what they were, and he wrapped them up, labeled them, and carried them off somewhere. And I've been here all the time. I locked the door and stood guard to make sure no demon got in, but I have not seen one of them. I haven't heard any either. I've grown hard of hearing over the years. Hmm, <laughs> the half-elf was a demon worshipper. The old man frowns in confusion. What do you mean, demon worshipper? That fine young man lies so well-dressed, so polite, but he said the crusaders. Oh my word, the, rel the relics, we must go after them. The old man works himself in a state, bitterly lamenting as he roots through his many pockets, but the outburst doesn't last long. The motion of his hands slows and the weariness fades from his eyes. He stares off to the distance, looks at you, and wets his lips, and sheepishly inquires, Sorry, did you say something? <laughs> Alright, uh, what happened here? The old man bursts into agitated muttering, gesticulating, gesticulating furiously with shaking hands. First, the bells started ringing, and then there goes there were noises in the streets. Then the dragon, Lady Torendula, began to roar and went to lock the door, but they were already inside, the thieves. There were seven of them, or perhaps ten? I don't remember. They are talking about some rubbish about how they were orphans, supposedly, and that they were dangerous. They grabbed me and wouldn't let go, and then they looted the place. They took everything in, with even a lick of gold and it relics, too. The museum boasts a very extensive collection, you know, and worst of all, they didn't. T uh, they took the wand, and when they were done, they tossed me aside like a piece of old junk. They didn't even bother to kill me. <laughs> the museum custodian looks at you with affront and anguish in his eyes. Uh, what wand did the thieves steal? The wand of Zacharias, my master. He was a great man, the hero of the last, uh, the hero of the defense of the lost chapel. And those scoundrels took his wand, a relic. The ballads are sung about Zacharias, and they're just damn thieves. Master Zacharias will return. He will assemble all of us as students, and we'll show them. I'll show them what Battle Mage Teldon is made of. Fury sparks in the old man's eyes. His spine straightens, and in a fluid motion, his hands raise his wand at the ready. But a howl of rage from outside frightens off the ghost of the past. The old man turns around and looks at you in befuddlement. You were just asking me about something. I forgot what it was. Tell me about Zacharias. The old man turns misty-eyed. Ah, oh, great hero he was, fearless but insightful. He never underestimated the strength of demons. When they laid siege to the lost chapel, it was Zacharias who stood in the breach to rescue the clerics. He understood that we couldn't hold out, but he refused to retreat. He had vowed to defend the temple. Before the final onslaught, he gathered up his surviving apprentices, looked us over, and picked me. He said, Tell Don, today I will die and leave my comrades behind. Take my wand and bring it to Canabras. Should an honor, should an hour of great need come, a worthy crusader can take the wand and bring it to me. I will show that my brothers need me once more. I will know that my brothers need me once more, and I will come to their aid. Not even death shall stop me. Ooh. And so I brought his wand and his final words here. I also brought something else here. That's why I am the way I am. The old man pokes the finger at the bald head. Fear consumed my mind and shattered my reason. I was so desperate to forget that terrible day that my memory slowly but surely fled my wretched head. Ah, uh, I see. You're not that bald. You actually still have hair there. Uh, are you alright? The old man smiles piteously and makes a helpless gesture. Old age, my young friend, old age and the poison of fear seeping into my mind, both have turned me from a crusader and battle mage into the sorry specimen you see before you. This museum is all I have, whatever I forget. Whenever I forget who and where I am, I just read the exhibit labels. They are of the past, just like me. And now, some ruffians have ransacked the place. I'm frightened, my young friend. I'm very frightened. 
Don't be afraid, the, young, the girl whispers. There's nothing to be afraid of. All the scary things have already happened. They're in the past. The old man nods with Kinesis' agitated emotions. Scary. So scary. Tell me about the museum exhibits. The old man seems to come to life. It would take a lifetime to tell you all there is to know. Well, I'll take you on a tour of the highlights, some of my personal favorites. You should have a look yourself. You won't regret it. For instance, we have a painting here depicting angels fighting demons. Now you find it. Uh, now you may find it hard to believe, but in the first crusades, many heavenly beings fought shoulder to shoulder with crusaders. And these two in the painting are Targona and Lario, the silver twins they were called. I actually met them, and you know, when I was a young man studying under Master Zacharias, they had no errors or graces about them. They walked among the mortals, they spoke to us, they healed our wounds. Lady Targona, I remember her especially well. She had a special, unearthly wisdom within her. The angel Lario, on the other hand, was known for his daring, and the youngest crusaders idolized him. I wonder where they are now, the twins. We don't have celestial beings in our ranks anymore. They all left something in this during the Second Crusade. On a very important mission, they said... Uh, they say, but I do love looking at the pictures and remembering those days when envoys of the heavens walked among us, and the light that seemed to shine from within them. The old man wiped his eyes. What was I saying? He must be a messenger? Yes, so are you a visitor? Why did those times end? Why do the celestials not fight with us still? Heaven has not abandoned us, surely. Heaven is above us, far, far away. Everyone here is good, I heard, but they can't see us from all the way up there. Lord of Virgin Pastor Chat, you said that the angels are going to Lariel twins, but how can angels have siblings? No, that's a good question, of course. Angels are not born like uh, mortals, so they can't come from a mother and father or sisters or mothers, or, uh, as we understand them. Angels come into being from reincarnated souls or from the pure essence of the upper plane sometimes. Angels may adopt some features of mortals, for instance, they can identify as male or female, although this is not generally their way. Some of them they can also develop bonds or camaraderie or even kinship, but the case of the Silver Twins is rarer still. They are two angels who emerge from one soul. What else should they call themselves if not twins? Yeah, okay. Alright, sure, I have to go now. Alright, see you, old man. Cool dude, cool dude. Alright, well, you know what? I think that's gonna do it for this episode. We, um, we did a lot. You know, we we got through the Market Square, we helped the Desnan followers escape from Hulrun, we killed Hulrun and his Inquisitors, now he's not gonna help us anymore, which sucks. But, you know what? You know, uh, we, we got the Azada path, so, yeah, that was a good surprise. And, yeah, I hope to see you guys, I hope to see you guys next time. But until then, goodbye for now.